Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to talk about how reading a book a week has changed my life. And to give some context around that, I thought I'd also talk super briefly about thoughts around reading a book a week in general, why I chose to do this in the first place, how I've been doing it up to this point, and of course how I feel that reading a book a week has changed my life up to this point in time. And on this channel, I hope to share with you guys strategies, thoughts, insights, methods, etc. Often of my own creation that I hope will help you in your life and possibly even your piano playing as well if you do that, because I happen to do that as well. So I did think to myself for a while, like, is it worth it to read a book a week? And I read different opinions on this. Some people say like, oh, it's, it's really just for bragging rights. It doesn't really mean anything to do that. Instead of reading a book each week, <clears throat> you can instead just read like the five most important books during the year, or just reread those most important books or read articles instead, that saves a lot more time. Like you can read articles, you can get this app that just kind of summarizes everything. And then I thought like, well, I'm, I also invest in myself heavily in other ways in terms of time, energy, and resources, in terms of like courses, coaching, watching videos on, on YouTube, my own learning and piano playing and so on. So I did think like, will it just incentivize me to just read really short books, for instance, and would my time be better spent reading less books? There's other more productive things I could be doing. And having thought about all that, I still just really resonated with this goal. It was exciting to me. It seemed fun to me. And so I decided to go with my intuition because honestly, our own intrinsic motivation, while it may still wax and wane, like, I mean, overall, I felt really great about it. So I thought I would ride that wave. I felt that intuition and connection with the universe or whatever you might want to say about that. And so I decided to go for it because I thought to myself, I mean, knowledge compounds over time. I'm really good at making connections between lots of different things. And, you know, as I learn, I'm going to have more and more hooks on which to hang more information. And so every time I encounter a new book, totally different perspective. And I, you know, I purposely might, you know, find different authors, different subjects and so on that's going to enter my system, become a part of my lattice work of mental models, as the late Charlie Munger would say. And I'm going to be able to come up with more ideas just because I'm encountering new perspectives, uh, new points of view, new ways of thinking about it. Even if it's the same topic, maybe it's a different perspective on that same one. Just the wording, just the way that they've said it may come across in a different way. And honestly, I don't do as well with just reading articles and I don't know if this is the case for everybody, but I, I mean, I really believe that humans are so forgetful. And, I, and there's a lot of scientific evidence for this as well, too, where we really need to have things repeated so many times so that it really sinks into our long term memory. I talk about this some on my channel, too, usually in the context of piano. Like I remember as a piano student, I would actually take notes nonstop during my teacher's lessons and I would record the lessons. And then when I listened to the recording and took notes again, I would still find that I'd missed tons of things. And I didn't even remember that it had happened, which, and so, and then like I was a high level pianist and like I would still need things repeated over and over again. And so a book, it really has the same, like people complain those 300 page book, it could have been like a 15 page article. I don't really think so in that way, because even if it's the same concept that comes back over and over again, just the sheer repetition, first of all, may be really helpful. Just like I'm teaching a piano student over time, I'm repeating the same thing week after week. That's what they're paying for, but it is still really valuable to them to have it really sink in. But many times it's coming back to me with different emphases, different bits of nuance. This detail is focused on here. This is, so it's installing in different areas of my brain and in different ways. And so the more different examples I encounter, the more different anecdotes, the more different points of view, the more likely it is to really sink in. And of course we could end up reviewing the books and so on in the future, but I found I was really able to deeply absorb. In fact, some authors, I would read like five of their books <clears throat> instead of just one. And man, like by the fourth, fifth book, I felt like I really understood it. And I was able to like talk about it and, and teach it and discuss it and reflect on it in my mind, which I think is a big part of uh, why I was able to do so much with the information. And I think I have another video that I, I think is called something like taking absorbing knowledge and taking action or something like that for like something to do with success. So I am I'm basically good at staggering the information such that like maybe in quarter one of the year, 
I am learning new material. I'm just like reading tons or whatever. And then in quarter two, I'm relentlessly executing on that new information that I gained. And I am also like learning new information as well. And then in quarter three, I'm executing on the new information I learned in quarter two and I'm absorbing more information. So this is how I could uh, prevent myself from falling into the trap of merely absorbing information and not just like sitting around doing nothing with it. So another great thing that happened is that because of the read a book a week requirement, sure, sometimes I read sh slightly shorter books, but man, like I always feel really motivated or pretty much always feel really motivated to read. And so I'm reading way, way more than I have at any other point during at least the last, I feel like decade or so of my life, probably longer. I used to read like a whole bunch as a kid, but it really hadn't been for a while that I, I mean, I went through like little phases, but it was not like a long-term habit. And I think now it's, I mean, I've read 40 books. I forget if I said that earlier in the video and I feel like really, really inspired to just keep going. So yeah, so I had all these thoughts and things, but I, decided to go for it. And then as things went on, I mean, I would say that the momentum just picked up. Anytime I fell behind, maybe I read some slightly shorter books and then I would become really inspired again. In terms of the how I go about reading, yeah, I would say that sometimes I will batch it. Like I'll set aside like a day or two and sometimes I'd be really inspired by, you know, super successful like entrepreneurs or other people that I, re that I greatly respect and look up to and how powerful their reading habit was. Like, I'm pretty sure like, you know, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and, you know, other, um, you know, in, in incredible people up there that they have really, really prolific reading habits. So, you know, rather than reading a little bit each day, honestly, I, I did end up and I am like batching the reading naturally a good amount of the time. Like I'll probably have like one or two days during the week or possibly like one or two days, two or three days over every like two or three weeks where I'm just reading a ton. I'm reading like all day long. I'm practicing less piano and actually reading more on those days. And then I kind of go a little bit more back to normal. So every time I have to catch up, I'm doing like more batching and it's just like reading days. And it actually feels really good. Like it feels like really great to just get that deep into the book or even a series of books. And I'm just in this reading mode and I'm just entering, I feel like all these different worlds. And, and surprisingly, maybe having just said that, I'm, I haven't been reading uh, fiction mostly. I pretty much, I almost read exclusively nonfiction. It's been mostly like business books because, you know, I, I do have uh, my own business and there's, there are some other piano teachers and so on that are working for me and with me as well. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always wanting to improve myself, improve the business, improve the company. And so a lot of books around business. And then also I've been reading a lot of like spirituality type books, life books and so on. And I feel like that's always been a part of me, even though I wouldn't consider myself to be like religious per se. Uh, but I've always felt myself to be very spiritual. And, and I haven't talked about that this much on at all on the channel. But um, yeah, so I, I really started to get deep into that and. There, there were some other books, some of them maybe more out there. Uh, there was a fiction book thrown in here and there. And so some of how reading a book a week has changed my life, I think I've already touched upon. But I will say, first of all, in terms of the business itself, I mean, honestly, we've had record revenue numbers this year, other record numbers as well. The business has been transformed and my teaching studio in ways I never could have imagined had I not read these books. And sometimes it was like, I really had to read like the five books by this author or it would not have had the effect. It wouldn't have like so seeped into my brain that it started changing my entire like way of being, uh, state of being and everything. And I think that's come across to all of my students and clients because there have been really strong kind of like business coaching, life coaching elements. Like I always felt like I was really sensitive to each and every student and client, but now it was like even more so to be able to help on the level of the person because I've so invested in myself, not only in terms of money, resources, et cetera, but just in terms of time, energy, how important it is to better myself, to educate myself because, you know, knowledge compounds over time. So as I get more, as, as I attain more of it, then it, like each piece of information becomes more valuable because of the base of knowledge I already have because of all the things it can latch on to. 
Well, that's coming across to clients, like my passion about learning and reading and so on, which I feel like I've kind of like rediscovered, that has been attracting a, a really incredible group of people. I've honestly never had a teaching studio, and, and I guess now it's like a teaching coaching studio, as amazing as what I have now. Like it's just a joy to show up genuinely for these students, whether it's in Pianist Collective or any of our other like really unusual programs here, or it's within my private teaching and coaching studio. And I've just never had so much fun working with, you know, just like a collective group of people like within my current studio. And, and, and I feel like it's because I've just attracted people that are very much like me that we're on the same wavelength. And so I'm most able to help them because they're just well, either they're like really positive or they're really, really willing to be helped. They're really open. They really love learning. They're really passionate about the piano or about life or about like improving themselves, uh, being the best that they can be. And so it, it's just like, I feel like my whole job and career is, is amazing because of this. And I think I said earlier, it's made me realize all over again how much I love reading and learning. Because as a pianist, like, of course, I always want to be practicing and improving in that way. And that's something I'm thinking a lot about this year and going into the future, like to try to do that even more so, like get even more into the piano playing because there's been more time spent on the business and the studio in recent years. But really just learning itself, like even if I weren't a pianist, man, I would just read and learn all day long and just find ways to improve myself, better myself so I can better help others. And I mean, I, I just wrote this here in case I forgot anything. I, I feel even in this moment, like hopefully you can tell, like it's just made me way happier. Like this has been, even with the inevitable ups and downs of life, undoubtedly my happiest year on the planet up to this point. And that's surprising to hear myself say, because, you know, as we all have, of course, there's been ups and downs over the next, uh, over the last few years, over the last decade and so on. But first of all, I've had times where like, it's truly like the happiest or most peaceful or whatever that I've ever been in my entire life. Like I feel like I've had like really special, like I, I'm not gonna go into the, all the details here, but I'm just like, wow, this is amazing to be in this place. And it's just because I read a lot of books. I mean, I also did other things like I read videos and, you know, was in coachings or other things like that myself. But I think the books had a very, like a really, really big contributing factor. And even just the act of reading sometimes would get me into that state. And then the average of experiences across this whole year, like it's just been really, really positive. Like it's, it just feels like everything's on the up and up. And so, I mean, who can beat that really in terms of how reading has changed my life? I mean, it, it's like to be happier than ever before. And also for my life, I, I feel like I'm optimizing more about happiness because really what's the point of playing the piano better, uh, teaching better, having your career succeed if you're still the exact same level of, let's say, anxious or depressed or whatever it may be as you were before. So let's say that you learn a lot more piano pieces or you get some awards for your teaching or you get a promotion at your job or, you know, you hit like a certain goal you have for yourself. But if you haven't taken care of what's within, well, you'll still be exactly the same level of happy or unhappy as you were years before. And so in a way, you're, you're kind of right back where you started. And I feel like it's really reading that has let me kind of awaken to that and actually realize like what's most important like in order in terms of like just spending time with my wife and family and cats <laughs> you know, spending time learning and growing finding the freedom that's in the world and in your life and there's so many more choices open to us whether you're an entrepreneur or not than people first realize so and I'm, honestly, it's just made life really fun. Like it feels like there's lots of possibilities. It feels like it's a game where I've realized that like the power-ups really comprise of just reading tons of books, learning, find like watching videos to improve. And, and it's, and people like not everybody is realizing it. I, I don't think any less of anybody if they like don't want to read or whatever it may be, but but man, like I just find like every time I read a new book, like it's 
making me happier. It's making me feel like things are more fun, like I'm a kid again. It is making me see the like really interesting connections between all these different concepts and things. I think what I'd love to do next is sometimes challenge myself to read some of those like really big books that, you know, kind of make it more difficult to stay a book a week. Um, and also start to branch out into some other subjects as well, too. Maybe some that don't even have anything to do with like business or life or spirituality, maybe some more fiction like I used to read as a kid, maybe some more philosophy or other things like that. And I still think that the reading a book a week is more effective than me just saying like, oh, I'll just I'll just kind of read in general. I don't think that would keep me reading quite as much. I think the idea of, oh, I'll just read like 20 books a year and then maybe I could read books that are longer where I have like one like big heavy book count as two books. I, I don't know. It just doesn't excite me as much. So I think a big part of choosing a goal like this is also about if you do resonate with it and if you do find it fun and exciting and engaging both initially and then also once things get going, if it still continues to inspire you. And I am continuing to find it inspiring. So anyway, hope this is useful, interesting to somebody out there. Let me know, are you an avid reader? If so, what is it that you're reading? Have you found that it's impacted your life? And if so, then share what it is that you've read and how it is that it's changed your life. And anyway, if you found this valuable, please like, subscribe, let people know about the channel and looking forward to the next one.